In this episode of Robotics for Beginners video series, we'll be going through different types of motors, explaining the difference between them, where you can use them, and explaining all your doubts regarding motors in simple English so that everyone can understand everything in a fun way. If you are new here, make sure you check out Robotics Tutorial for Beginners video series right now. You will find a lot of beginner friendly tutorials there. So hit the subscribe button and let's get started. So any robot that moves by itself requires some kind of motors. And we have to be really careful when we are buying motors because motors for one purpose might not be suitable for another purpose. The type of motor totally depends on what type of motion is required, the power level, where this motor is connected to, as well as the voltage and current requirements. If you have seen some of our past robotics tutorial videos, you might have seen a lot of wheeled robots, right? In those robots, we have a robot chassis, wheel, and a motor that connects the chassis to the wheel. It is this motor that provides a relative movement between the robot chassis and the wheel. For these type of movements, we generally use a DC motor. DC motors are the most commonly used motors in robotics world. DC motors are driven by providing a DC voltage. In most cases, DC motors will have two terminals. We will be providing a DC voltage across these two terminals. The best thing about DC motor is, we can change the direction of rotation of the shaft by simply inverting the voltage terminals. For example, if the motor turns clockwise, if we provide positive voltage to terminal A and negative voltage to terminal B, then it will surely rotate anti-clockwise when we provide negative voltage in terminal A and positive voltage in terminal B. It is very easy to connect and use these kind of motors in our robots. This type of motors doesn't need complicated circuitries to operate. All we need is a constant supply of DC voltage across the terminals. But if you need to change the direction of rotation, we can use simple edge split circuits. In one of our previous video, we explained how L293D motor driver IC works and how we can drive a robot using Arduino and L293D motor driver IC. If you want to learn more about DC motors and how we can create robots using DC motors, check out this video right here. In addition to this, we can add gears to this motor to increase or reduce the speed and torque of the motor. These are called geared DC motors. DC motors are commonly used in places where we require continuous 360 degree movement, for example wheels of robot. There is another type of DC motor that I will explain in a minute. Another motor that we most commonly use in robots like robotic arms is the servo motor. This kind of motor is mainly used in cases where we need to move or push an object with great precision. Using certain control circuits in the servo motor, we can easily move an object that is attached to the servo motor to specific angles. But what is the difference between servo motor and a DC motor? Servo motor is basically a DC motor with some additional circuit. One major difference between the DC motor and the servo motor is, unlike the DC motor, the rotation is not continuous in the case of servo motors. Usually, the servo motor will be able to rotate plus or minus 90 degrees that is, a total of 180 degree. But modifications can be made to the circuit so as to rotate complete 360 degrees. Also, unlike DC motor, servo motor has three terminals. One is for positive voltage, the other is for negative voltage, and then we have another additional terminal where we provide the input control signal. This is where we provide PWM signals or pulse width modulated signal which control the position of the servo motor shaft. But how does this servo motor achieve this precise movement? Like I mentioned earlier, it has a control circuit which mainly consists of an error detection amplifier and a position detector. For detecting the position, usually a potentiometer is used. The error detection amplifier is basically a comparator which will compare the input signal as well as the output from the potentiometer. The comparator then generates a third signal which will drive the DC motor. This third signal will be generated as long as there is a difference between the input signal and the signal from the potentiometer. This third signal is called error signal and this error signal is amplified and then fed to the motor. The input signal or the command signal that we provide is usually in the form of pulse width modulated signal. Based on the pulse width modulated signal that we provide to the control terminal, the position of the shaft changes. This varies from motor to motor. In most cases, for example, if we provide a signal with pulse width equal to 1.5 millisecond, the shaft of the servo motor will move 90 degree. 
and if we provide a signal with less than 1.5 millisecond the shaft of the servo motor will move to an angle less than 90 degree and if we provide a signal with pulse width greater than 1.5 it will move to an angle greater than 90 degree in order to generate these pulse width modulated signals we can simply use circuits which employs a triple five timer ic or we can generate the signals using microcontrollers like arduino there are a lot of different types of servo motors such as motors that run on ac voltage control signals provided in form of analog or digital voltage but the most commonly used servo motor in the field of diy robotics is the dc servo motors where we provide input voltage in the form of pwm signals these motors are commonly used in projects where we do not need complete 360 degree movement but instead precise movements to a particular angles best example is robotic arm in the case of robotic arm we can use this kind of motor to connect different moving parts of the arm also we can use servo motors like this to control the flaps and ailerons of diy we can create our own custom arduino boards with the servo motor driver and use it for our project it's very easy to create our own PCBs for our projects using Altium PCB Designer. We have detailed playlist where I explain how to create your own PCB step by step for beginners. Feel free to check that out. Altium is a PCB designer that can be used to create simple PCBs for hobby projects or complex and multi-layer PCBs for industrial use. It's easy to create our own PCBs using Altium. If you are a DAV electronics enthusiast, you are gonna love it. Altium subscription includes Altium 365 which will let you design, share and manufacture your project in one place. Secure centralized cloud storage lets you share designs and ideas with teammates or clients. You can download and install free trial version from the description down below. And if you are a student, you get a 6 month full license absolutely free. Next, we have the stepper motor. Stepper motor is one of the most widely used motors if we need more precise movements. Unlike continuous motion in the case of DC motors, stepper motors movements are more like step by step and hence the name stepper. And all these precise movements can be controlled without using any feedback circuit. In order to understand how this control is achieved, it will be better if we take a look at the mechanism of the motor. The rotor of the stepper motor is usually a permanent magnet. Around the magnet, you will see windings of the stator. As you can see here, the windings of the stator are segmented and can be excited individually. As we excite different coils of the stator in a particular pattern, the interaction between the magnetic field of the rotor and the magnetic field of the stator will cause the rotation of the rotor in a particular direction in a step-by-step -step manner. Basically, that's how the stepper motor works. There are different kinds of stepper motor and each has their own way to make it work. Most commonly used and simple configuration for driving stepper motor is using bipolar configuration stepper motor driver. Here, we will be using L293 3D motor driver IC to excite the coil in a particular pattern and to drive the motor. Then, we have another type of motor called brushless motor. But this is simply another category of DC motor. The DC motor that we talked about in the first section is actually brushed DC motor. Brushed DC motors have coils in their center rotating around permanent magnet while brushless DC motors have permanent magnets in the center that rotate around the coils. The brushless motor design is better suited for applications that will make use of its longer lifespan and greater energy efficiency. Unlike the brushed DC motor which requires 5 to 12 DC voltage applied directly across the motor to rotate, the brushless DC motor requires 3 phase power. This means that a brushless DC motor controller must output the appropriate power to the different coils to achieve rotation. For ease of use, we generally use a circuit called ESC or electronic speed controller in order to control them. For a simpler and easier operation, we generally use brush DC motors, but brushless motors are commonly used in rotors of DIY aircrafts. So basically, these are the most commonly used motors in DIY robotics field. For each motor, it has specifications like voltage, power, torque, current, etc. There are a lot of motors that can handle high torque but in low velocity. Also, there are motors that can handle low torque with high velocity. So, always keep in mind the approximate load or weight the motor has to handle when it is operating and buy a motor with a bit more torque than what is actually required. That's it for this video. 
If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.